James McKenzie with OVH Cloud US. We've been getting a lot of requests recently on how you can install game servers on top of our VPSs. Today I'll be showing you A to Z how you can get started with Rust on a server that's going to cost around $10 a month, as well as some open source tools that you can use to manage that server and get it going. So let's get started. From our website, you're going to want to log into your OVH account after you purchase your service, of course. To get to the VPS section, you can go to Bare Metal Cloud, and that should load all of your services. Now you're going to want to choose the VPS that you installed or the dedicated server. Either or works for this tutorial. There might be slight differences on what the username is when you log in, depending on the OS, for example. In my case, I chose Ubuntu uh, 2004, just because it's one of my most comfortable OSs. Now to get started, you might want to change the name of your VPS to make it easier to remember. In this case, I'm going to go with something easy to remember, so Rust Server Tutorial. And then that's going to actually modify the VPS name itself in my manager, so I'll be able to know exactly which one it is. Now next I'm going to reinstall the OS fresh so that you guys can get the same experience that you would normally uh, when you install. So I'm going to choose my favorite OS. You see here we have a huge catalog of OSs you can choose from. Uh, you can also choose to install an SSH key. In this case I'm not going to do that, but it is good practice security wise to do that. And also if you do not, you're going to get a clear text email password. It's very important to change that once you do receive that password. So another thing to note is you should grab your IP, keep it handy because you're going to need it for all of the next steps once you log into the VPS. So now I'm going to SSH into my VPS using the credentials that were sent to me by email. By default, the username you're going to have on your VPS is named after the OS, but there's still a pseudo user, so you still have full root privileges, so just keep that in mind. So now you're sure you're logged in, you can go over to linuxgsm.com. They're one of our partners that is amazing. They made a great tool that you can use to install your game server through command line extremely easily and efficiently, and it's all free. They also have a great Discord that is full of knowledge that you can go to. You can ask anybody any questions about what you're going through, and they'll most likely be able to help you and push you at least in the correct direction of what you're trying to do. So now once you're in the server section of their website, you'll see they support a ton of games. In this case, we're going to go to Rust and follow all of their instructions. So here you'll see the minimum recommended distros. You can see a little bit more information on the Steam CMD game library and other distros if you want to install uh, that way. You can check the dependencies. Now you should grab this right away. This is going to be very important to install. And it's going to upgrade and update uh, your OS as well as install any other dependencies that were needed for Linux GSM to run. So the first thing I'm going to do here is run the command to install this as sudo. Now you will be prompted to uh, agree and subscribe and all the things to Steam as well as uh, agree to install the other packages. And in this case there was one missing which I had to install manually. So keep that in mind, if there's anything missing you might have to do a little manual install, all very easy to find on the internet. The dependencies installed. Next, you're going to want to go into the install section of the Linux Game Server Manager page for Rust, and you can add user, log into that user, and then download the Linux GSM shell, as well as install the server afterwards. So we're going to follow all of these steps by adding the user first. Also, you're going to want to remember to sudo that command so you can actually run it. So then you're going to want to add the user set up the password and information for that user. And then once that's done, you can log in to the user using the password that you just set up. Now you can use dot slash rust server install and that's going to install the game. So you will be prompted a few times and make sure that all the dependencies are installed here, otherwise the install might not go through. And then you're just going to want to wait until this finalizes and that's when you can start really working on the server itself. So now we're here, 
uh, the best idea in this case is go through the basic usage guides from uh, Linux GSM as well as going through all their other docs that's going to answer literally 99% of any question that you can possibly have. Uh, they also have great knowledge base inside their Discord, but you can find everything you need on their site. So before you can actually start playing on the server, you're gonna want to update LGSM, just making sure that it's okay. So I had a bit of an update to do here. And then afterwards you can start configuring the game server itself. So in that case, you can go into the LGSM uh, directory, and then you're gonna wanna keep going through these directories and find uh, the actual game server config. So that's gonna be in the LGSM configuration. And this is where you're gonna be able to actually give your server the IP address and the name that you want. So you'll see here there's default CFG, common CFG, Rust CFG, etc. In this case, I'm going to go into default uh, to show you what's inside of there. And then afterwards, uh, you can copy that over and replace the common CFG file uh, with the contents of default CFG. And that's what Russ is going to take to be able to list and actually show your server. So as it mentions as a warning here, do not edit any changes will be overwritten. So you're going to want to actually get out of here. And then you're going to want to copy default CFG to common CFG. But I'll show you what's in common first, which is just stats. This is the global settings for your server. And these are gonna take place at start every time your server starts. So now I'm going to remove common CFG and then I'm going to copy default CFG and name it common CFG. So that's going to bring everything that you saw in default over to common. And then you can start editing the lines in common CFG with your server's actual information. So in my case, I'm gonna use my VPS's IP address I'm gonna use uh, my own password for Archon, for example, and any other kind of things you might wanna change, the map seed, salt, uh, maximum amount of players, and anything else you can think of uh, in here, as well as the server name, very important. Changing the server name is how you're gonna be able to actually find and share out your Rust server name without having to connect directly to the IP. So that's how it's gonna display in the Rust server search. So now that that's done, we're gonna wanna go ahead and update the Rust server as well as launch it. So we're gonna do the update and nothing should have to be updated because it's a brand new install. And then you're gonna wanna launch it. And once that's done, you're gonna be able to connect. Let's go test out our new Rust server. So from the server browser, I can search for the name that I created, OVH Linux GSM Test VPS, and then join the server. That's gonna load for a second. And look, I'm waking up on a beach, so that is a great sign. Uh, so the server is running pretty well on this VPS, but as I mentioned earlier, this would be for smaller groups, so maybe 10 to 20 player slots. And that really depends on what kind of plugins you have and how you're managing the server itself. If you want something to host a larger community, I would make a few suggestions below in the description of the video so you can see what servers might correspond more to the user base you're expecting. And then the last thing that I wanna go over is a user management tool called Rust Admin, uh, which does have a free version and is actually created by one of our customers. So Rust Admin allows you to manage your Rust server slash Rust users through a very simple interface. You can kick, ban, mute, check stats, set up automated commands and messages, and even manage your plugins through there. It has a ton of features, so I suggest you can check it out. I'll leave their website along with any important topics that I've covered during this video in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me through Twitter or Discord. And I'm wishing you guys all the best for your future wipes. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.